Okay, folks, so it's turn 55, and shockingly, shockingly, I'm still alive. Let's watch this battle in Joman. So, in Joman, I busted out with everything, and I brought in all of my Ryujin carrying gems. Now, there is one very, very interesting thing you might notice in this battle, which has to do with one of my Ryujin. Yes, this guy, Kinshige, he's one of the Ryujin I recruited recently, since the last patch, and you may notice... He only has water level 2. Why is that? Oh, it's because he doesn't have his Dragon Pearl. Uh, all the Ryujin spawn with this item, the Dragon Pearl. Uh, it gives them plus 1 water magic and their temporary water gem, plus water breathing. And it is, of course, cursed. So, Kinshige the Ryujin uh, is amphibious but does not have water breathing. Which doesn't matter because, okay, that's fine. But, he also only has water level 2, and he doesn't get a free water gem. Uh, this appears to be related to a fix for pretender items that was in the last patch. Uh, the Dragon Pearl is also an item that the Dragon King pretender got, and the there's another drag, another Oriental Dragon one. The, the, both of them, the Celestial Dragon. Actually, I think only the Dragon King, but the Dragon King starts with it. So, they fixed some bug regarding pretender items, but in the process they removed pretender items from units. So, Ryujin now do not spawn with the Dragon Pearl. Uh, which I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure is an unintended nerf. And it's a stupid nerf, and also a very frustrating one. But, got my line of infantry, got my unexpected Shark Warriors, my surprise Ryujin, some Wyverns. On his side, he's got a big ol' line of infantry. He's got mages scattered in the back, albeit fewer than before. And he has Ayela, the Queen of Storms. So... We spam, we're spamming lots of buffs, lots of buffs on all sides. I dropped, uh, air shield on all my troops, and I started summoning tons and tons of water elementals, just m as many water elementals as possible. My green lions charged ahead and started spitting acid. They actually routed a significant fraction of the enemy troops back here. The wyverns landed in the back and attacked Ayela, which pinned her down and kept her from jumping to the back of my formation. And my troops charged forward, and my my shark warriors were just too tough. I, I cast flaming arrows, which doesn't actually help me because I have no missile units in this army. But it was scripted to be cast, and I forgot to take it out. But these green lions really proved their worth in this battle. Just blasting tons and tons and tons of the enemy. Um, Aela, the Queen of Storms, she does manage to beat those wyverns fairly quickly, although they do have liquid body on them, so they are hard to hurt. But, um, all these troops get, get kind of caught up back here, and as a consequence, they are not helping the infantry fight. Uh, this line of hoplites was falling back for quite some time. My fire ants then charge in and muck things up further, and at this point we've broken through the initial infantry formation. So Ayela goes, I'm not sure where she goes, Ayela jumps to the back while, while her army is basically getting cleaned up, but now the armies of Arcosophale are routed. So Ayela, despite being in perfect health and having taken pretty much no damage whatsoever, uh, Ayela routes. Um, and she gets hit with all kinds of spells, and I think none of them affect her whatsoever. She's cursed, but... Beyond that, I think she resists absolutely everything my mages do and just flies away. But, up in the front line, my uh, lions and water elementals storm through the enemy, wreaking havoc, killing as many as possible, and we actually break out of Joman. I lost my Ujigami. Um, I had thugged him out and set him to be an assassin, and then I sent him into this battle because I needed him to go, and he died. So that's unfortunate, but... Uh, the, the green lions, you can see the green lions did a lot of work. Five kills each. The Shark Warriors, likewise, did quite a bit of work. The Wyverns even did some work. Um, I lost about a third of my infantry, and I wiped out almost the entire sieging force, including all 12 Shamans, and six of the eight Mystics, and a commander. Uh, the Queen of Storms, unfortunately, escaped. I also killed both of their Sybils. So I crushed a significant number of mages here, as well as a large army. It doesn't really matter all that much. First of all, I was attacked by... Um, so, Oak Halls, I was moving this army to, to help... And, unfortunately, uh, this triggered my, my trap card. So this was my Onmyoji uh, Gifts from Heaven communion, 
and it's a small, unsustainable communion. And it was designed to basically go into a battle and cast gifts from heaven like a bunch of times and kill a whole bunch of the enemy, which it did. Unfortunately, the enemy in this case was vine men that I don't care about. So I cast, so I have to cast three rounds of gifts from heaven, right? So this guy, he's a communion master. He's at 140 fatigue. This guy's a communion slave. He's already at 200 and taking damage because he doesn't have the the earth random because all my earth randoms are communion masters right now so as a consequence i spam gifts from heaven all over these vine men and i kill off all my own communion slaves which is that is to say half of my own miyoji so that's a problem i was really really hoping that i would be able to spring that trap on the arcocephalian army and wipe out a significant fraction of their infantry it didn't work out like that because these guys spawned at exactly the wrong time in exactly the wrong place. Uh, I was also attacked in the wetlands by Bogus and his troops, and he just wiped out my province defense, and there's nothing I can do about it. In Man, Atlant Man tried to break out of Atlantis's siege of his capital, and completely failed. Uh, he's got a pretty sizable army, but Atlantis's army is bigger, and on top of that, Atlantis's army is supported by several Angakoks, who can, of course, do all sorts of nasty Angakokish things like summoning elementals and summoning skeletons and throwing in darkness so lots and lots of lightning going down thunder strikes hitting all over the enemy army but it's not really going to matter all that much because uh welcome to unlimited zombie works and skeleton works they're just they're just crapping out just a million approximately a million skeletons so the Atlantean Infantry actually does route. A significant fraction of the Atlantean Infantry does route. He's cast Stygian Reigns, which makes all his troops invulnerable. So his troops are very, very hard to hurt. Um, Man has thrown down Etherealness on his troops. And they are also invulnerable, but it doesn't matter because Atlantean troops use magic weapons. So both the Ethereality and the Invulnerability don't hurt Atlantis at all. And they sweep Man from the field in a tide of skeletons. Uh, he killed an Angakok, he killed five Forgiving Fathers, so actually quite a few of Atlantis's mages died, which is nice. Um, he also killed 144 Ice Guards and 51 Ice Warriors, a few Unfrozen, which don't really matter, and two Tungaliks. So he killed several mages, however, he lost 30 Magister's Arcane. 30. Let me say that again, he lost 30 mages in exchange for one Slow to Recruit Capital only. Five underwater mages and two small weak mages. Not a good trade. Not a good luck. I got Hashi Saburu, the Red Devil. Um, I am. I, I have to say this. Uh, I was in Utenshur. I was intercepted and defeated. In fact, destroyed. Um, I did kill three mystics. I think they actually just died from communion fatigue. But uh, my little army here that was moving to try and help was caught, and my infantry was not sufficient. Uh, I managed to get an incinerate off, or a conflagration rather. Conflagration is a great spell, but you can see my back line is retreating and or destroyed at this point. And the hoplites are pretty much goners. I think he's been, uh, I think he's been enslaved, so yeah. Nothing productive happened there. I lost one of my own Miyoji, and then in the retreat, uh, did manage to retreat, did manage to get some troops back to Jilman, which is fine. Disappointing, but okay. I have to say that I have really, really lost steam in this game a little bit, for one thing, and there's two reasons for that. For one thing, I've gotten to the late game as Jilman, and let me be fully honest, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I've never gotten to the late game as Jilman before. I mean, the late game in general is, um, is a weakness of mine because I haven't gotten there very often but specifically and especially the late game as Joman is like well what do I do now <laughs> uh, the other reason is uh, this bug like my the Ryujin and specifically breaking the um, breaking the seas of ice with the connivance of uh, Patala which I did uh, was kind of my I want to say my trump card in a way, it was kind of the, the surprise I was going to spring, but now, like, losing a point of water isn't the end of the world, except it makes it 
very much harder. Losing the extra gem is a big hit. And losing a point of water makes it a lot harder for them to spam elementals. Like, at this point now, instead of Ryujin being able to hop into a province and cast an elemental for absolutely free, they can hop into a province and cast an elemental for two gems and then take a very long nap afterwards. Which, as you might... I mean, which I'm sure you can see is a very different ball of wax. And, of course, the fact that I'm losing. And I I'm going to be fully honest. Losing is dispiriting. It is. I mean, you know, after, especially in Dominions where you put a ton of time and effort into the game, uh, being overwhelmed like this is hard. Now, I'm being overwhelmed because of my own blunders. Um, I'm being overwhelmed because I didn't have anti-super combatant strategies online. I'm being overwhelmed because I didn't anticipate enemy super combatants or pl and plan for them appropriately and I'm being overwhelmed because I went into a war that I was not actually prepared for uh, however the the end the net end result is I am in this situation where like I've won my capital back but I am no longer in contention in any way especially because Patala has now effectively turned on me they basically let me know, like, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna keep this thing up because there's no percentage in it for Patala. Um, Arcosafale is going to take my territory, and unless unless Patala gets a piece of that, they're going to be outcompeted. The, this game is now between Patala, Arcosafale, and Atlantis, and I would honestly say Arcosafale is in a solid position. I would honestly probably say that uh, I'm gonna have him assassinate just for the lulls. I would probably say that um that Atlantis and Patala are in the strongest positions, but we'll see. In any case, um, I do still have my capital. My magic gem income is god-awful because I've lost so much territory. Uh, the King of the Mountains is besieging this fort and just kind of holding me down. You know, just, just holding a brother down like he does. Uh, my research is in the toilet because I've lost so many mages. I do at least have my uh, region available albeit weaker than they should be. Uh, and I actually have quite a large pile of Ryujin here. So, something can be done with that. So I think, I think at this point, it is the hour of the Ryujin. I think at this point, what I have to do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Boy, you sure do not need all that gear. Uh, yeah, you can keep the helmet. The helmet, is, the helmet is nice. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think that's as many as I had. And Kinshika, you can stay behind. So I think at this point it's time to take 12 Ryujin and start, like, trolling. Ba ba basic, basic, I mean, you could dress it up in pretty words, but basically I mean it's time to troll. Um, it's either that or go AI. And at this point, like, it would be a little bit bad manner to go AI at this point because I do still have territory and I could still fight-ish. But I've lost about 50-60% of my territory to Arco Cephali, basically without a really good fight except for this one at Joman. And um, I don't think anyone could say with a straight face that I have a shot at winning at this point. Um, to get a little bit of analysis out of the way, obviously, as I was saying, I've, I'm in this position because of my own blunders, because I didn't fully appreciate the threat of Arcosafale soon enough. If I had gone in a little bit sooner, it might have been better. However, I was barely able to persuade Patala to help me to the very limited extent that he did. And I don't think, I overall, I'd probably be better off now if I had actually just gone and fought Patala. Um, because I feel like I could have pulled that off with better success. Now, that would have left Arcosafale to be a problem for later, but I think that would have still probably been okay. Um, Atlantis, of course, was always going to be a huge problem, because Atlantis is always a huge problem, but I never had a chance to really attack him. I never had a border with him, so I was always going to have to just leave that for later. In terms of... Here's my main weakness my main weakness that I didn't fully appreciate was that uh, while Ryujin are good, they are fairly limited in what they can accomplish. And the other 
what you kind of have to lean on in the late game is communions in order to buff yourself up to the point where you can cast the really big spells. Jomon's has communions, but they're garbage. They're just really bad communions. Um, as you saw over here, this communion just detonated because of the random paths. Uh, unlike Flegra, the other nation that relies on random paths in communions, uh, Jomon is missing a lot of the natural advantages that make Flegran communions really good, such as, and this is going to sound weird, the fact that Flegran communion masters are all only one level in the path makes their communions actually better because it means their slaves never take quadruple fatigue. Over here, the reason these communion slaves died so quickly was because they didn't have earth at all, and as a consequence from Chikafusa, they were taking quadruple fatigue, which means that his gifts from heaven were effectively dropping at 200 fatigue or so. Well, he was boosted up. He had, they have four slaves, so he was boosted up to level four, so they were effectively 100 fatigue each, which is still a lot. And these guys were still effectively... Uh, 50 each so it added up real real quick uh, actually more than that because yeah these were all effectively 100 each as well because they didn't have the benefit of being one level over the path so no they would only have been 50 because they were I'm going to do a video on communion math at some point because it's extremely complicated but the point is Jomani's communions have so many randoms involved and have such uh, such difficulty getting getting consistent high levels of anything that they're just really bad, uh, basically. And, of course, Omiyoji are slow to recruit, so Jomanese communions are also small. Compare Arcosophale, who in every battle, every major battle so far, has had like 20 or 30 mages in communions. Compare that to my communions where I have maybe eight or nine mages because Onmyoji are slow to recruit and it's just so so hard to mass any appreciable number of them. I can still cast astral spells. I can still take several turns if I want casting self buffs in order to get myself up to the point where I can cast high spells but that takes time and it costs fatigue and that's time and fatigue that the Arcosophalian mages are spending casting spells that kill me. So um not to complain too much about that uh, I, I went into this knowing that Jomon was a weak nation. And I don't mean to complain about having discovered, oh, hey guys, guess what? Jomon's a weak nation. It is what it is. Uh, I, I went into this with eyes wide open, and to be honest, to be honest, I'm actually pretty satisfied with how well I've done. I mean, as Jomon, I... I done good. I carved out a very significant empire for myself. Uh, I captured two capitals. Uh, I made it into what's definitely the late game. I mean, just judging by research, I'm, we're definitely in the late game at this point. Uh, and I gave, you know, I did yeoman work. Now, I do still need to work on my war, my warfaring skills. Um, but I feel okay about this. I feel okay about this game. Now, I'm not going to go AI. Because, like I said, that would kind of be bad manners at this point. I'm going to fight on. However, I'm going to stop recording this game at this point. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm losing my enthusiasm for this game a little bit. I'm going to keep going because it will teach me some things. And I'm going to keep going because, you know, I want other people to enjoy the game to the best of my ability. And that means fighting as hard as I can for a while longer. This isn't like the Machaka game where I went AI, but I only had really my capital and a couple of other provinces and my army was dead and I had no gem income whatsoever. No, this is, I still have a totally unthreatened capital up here. I still have several forts. My capital is still alive. I'm going to keep fighting um, and I'll do a little bit more damage before I'll go down swinging basically is what I'm saying, but I'm going to stop recording because it does, recording does take a lot of time. There are other things that I want to record and this game is pretty much, I mean, it's all over except for the crying from my perspective. So we're going to drag the crying out for a little while, but I'm not going to be uh, spending time, my time and your time, uh, showing off every last little tear and sniffle. So, thanks for watching, folks. Um, this has been a really great series. I hope you've learned something about Joman. I know I have. I, I, I have a definite appreciation for the nation. Um, Joman is surprisingly strong in these particular circumstances where it has these lakes it can get into. If you have the lakes, <coughs> excuse me, if you have the lakes and you can get up a whole bunch of Ryujin, then Jomon has a lot more play than it does in standard uh, random Dominions map generator maps where Jomon tends to start next to an ocean. 
that contains like Relay or Atlantis on another coast or something like that and just get wiped underwater before it can really get established. So it's been interesting. It's been a good time and thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked this series, uh, continue, uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, consider checking out the Patreon and possibly donating. I do have a, a Discord server where me and some of the guys hang out, people who have donated to the Patreon and a couple of my buddies from other servers who play Dominions or play other games. And we'd love to have you there. Uh, it's In the near future, I'm going to start organizing games through the Discord. Uh, I'm actually upgrading my computer equipment, and so should should be able to be playing some more some of the more modern games a little bit faster. Uh, one of the reasons why I haven't done as much a uh, Total War Warhammer 2 and stuff like that is because I just can't my computer chokes on it just a little bit. But that problem should be solved fairly shortly. Uh, of course, I'm not going to stop doing Dominions. Obviously, let me first reassure you of that. And I'm not going to stop doing old games. In fact, I have some like weird obscure old games that I'm going to be doing episodes on. I don't know how popular they'll be, but it'll be it'll be a good time. I enjoy them. So in any case, uh, thank you very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next series.